Welcome back. Part two of the book looks at ways we can learn about text by just looking at the words. We'll look at many techniques that have been developed over the years, but I always find it fascinating to think about how our brains process language. This is an open research area, but a recent paper from the journal Nature shares some interesting research. Researchers at UC Berkeley had volunteers sit in an MRI machine with their eyes closed, listening to recordings of the Moth Radio Hour. By analyzing the data, researchers were able to compile correlations between blood flow to specific regions in response to different words. They were able to create a language map of where words and concepts were stored throughout the cortex, the outer layer of our brains. There was some evidence that words with similar meanings were stored closer to each other. Exciting as this research is, we're a long way from understanding how concepts and words are stored in human brains. Meanwhile, we can do what we can computationally, and one important technique is term frequency. In this notebook, we look at some features in NLTK for text analysis. First, we import some sample texts from the NLTK corpus. By the way, the word corpus means body, and it's used in NLP to mean a collection of documents. Initially, we'll do some pre-processing, namely lowercasing the text. We'll look at text 4, which is the inaugural address corpus. If text 4 were just raw text, we could say text4.lower. But text 4 and the other built-in texts in the corpus are actually NLTK text objects, and they've already been tokenized. So this list comprehension will return a new list with all the tokens in lowercase. And we see that this corpus has almost 150,000 tokens in it. We can toss those into a set from the list to remove duplicates, and we see that it has 9,000 unique tokens. If we sort them alphabetically, we see there's a lot of punctuation. Let's do some more pre-processing. This will get rid of any tokens that aren't alphabetic and that are stop words. After that, we have about 64,000 words, and the unique words are again close to 9,000. We can see some of these important words, not surprising in the corpus that we're looking at, fellow citizens, senate house, and so forth. Lexical diversity tries to measure the richness of vocabulary in text. The higher the number, the more diverse the vocabulary. And there are many different formulas for that. Here's just a very simple approach of taking the unique words divided by the length of the total tokens. And we see we got a fairly low score here of 0.14. Not surprising because inaugural addresses are going to be using a lot of the same vocabulary. A use case for lexical diversity is in educational applications in analyzing writing samples of students as a diagnostic of their vocabulary. Next, we'll normalize the text to get the lemmas for each token, and then the set of those. We had close to 9,000 unique tokens, but closer to 8,000 unique lemmas. From that, we can create a dictionary. Um, here we see a dictionary comprehension works just like a list comprehension, except we're going to have curly braces around it instead of square brackets, and we'll need a key value pair. So our key is going to be our unique token, and the value will be its count in the text. And here we'll print just one item. Citizen occurred 303 times. Now that we have a dictionary, we can print the most common and least common words. A dictionary is by definition unsorted, so when we apply the sorted function to it, what it will actually return is a list of tuples, where the first element is the key and the second element is the count. 
sorting by value in reverse order the five most common words are government, people, nation, you, and state. And the least common words are threefold, devoting, retaliate, fastened, and neck. So we notice this odd U up there, and that gives us a chance to talk about the fact that often these little issues come up in NLP applications, and it takes some digging to go in and see what happened and see what, if anything, you can do about it. So that U was among the five most common lemmas. So it must have been some short word that starts with U that ended up as just the U. So we're going to do a list comprehension to extract from the text all of the tokens that start with U and are short. And then we'll convert those into a set. And here's two suspects, the word up and the word us. So we can see what happens when us is limitized and we get this U here. So with a little detective work, we found that that was a problem. So a workaround that we can do is to create our own customized list of stop words and include us. Another workaround would be just remove words of length one from the set of unique lemmas. And then we could also try different limitizers to see if we get better results. So trying approach number one here, we get the stop words from NLTK and then we can add to it, we can concatenate onto that list words that we would like to omit. Notebook 5.2 takes another look at some of the functionality of NLTK. One of the nice things about NLTK is that it's open source. So here's a link to the definition for the text class. The text object has many built-in methods. We'll take a look at some of these. You're not limited to the built-in text object, so you can create your own. And here's an example of how to do that. Here I'm reading in the text of the Constitution, removing the new lines with the built-in string replace function, tokenizing, lower casing, and getting rid of everything that's not text, and then converting it to a text object. Now that we have a text object, we can use some of the built-in NLTK methods. But we can also use Python methods. We can get a count of how often a token occurred. The NLTK function concordance will show us the context where people occurred. So we know people occurred nine times. And here we see the surrounding text. We can get an index into the first occurrence. This is simple Python. And we can use the NLTK similar to find words that appear in the same context as people. Some of these make sense, citizens, members, some of these not so much. On an NLTK text object, we can create a dispersion plot. So we specify in a list the words we're interested in. On the x-axis, we have our word offset and a tick mark everywhere that word occurred. There's even a generate function and this sounds very constitutiony, except it doesn't make sense when you actually read it. We can create a frequency distribution, and then from there we can find the most common words. And you can see here this is based on simply counts. Here are a couple of plots of the frequency distribution. The difference is whether it's cumulative frequencies or just individual frequencies. The most interesting one is the individual frequencies. Not surprisingly, the word the was the most common. Notice this interesting curve here. There's an observation related to this called Zipf's Law. For any corpus, it turns out that the frequency of a word is inversely proportional to its rank. It's named after George Zipf, and he described this phenomenon a long time ago, but nobody really knows why words follow this law. This is an interesting phenomenon that's observed not only in words, but in other domains as well. The term hapax legobanon is used in NLP to refer to words that occur only once. We can extract those from an NLTK text object, and we see here some examples here. I, here we're creating a set of words that are long, more than 12 characters, and you can see there's quite a few. 
And here we're making a list comprehension, returning a list of tuples where the first item in the tuple is the word, the second item is its count, and these are for longish words, greater than seven, and more common words. So we've seen many different ways that we can analyze text just looking at words. In this video, primarily we looked at word frequencies. Word frequencies will be an important tool going forward with many different applications as we'll see. So today I'll leave you with a quote from the Irish writer Samuel Beckett. Words are all we have.